Hey guys, today I want to do a quick comparison between the Thermal Master X3 and the Fleur 1 Pro. I think they're both very different in terms of their applications, but you know, for general purpose, temperature measurements and inspections, that type of thing, they both are pretty good. Okay, let's have a look at the Thermal Master X3 first. And you can already see the incredible resolution of this thermal camera. It's 384 by 288. That's the basically the highest resolution plug-in camera out there in the market. I can't find anything else of this resolution, especially for, at this price point. Ultra smooth 60 hertz refresh rate and less than 25 millikelvin sensitivity. So this thing is excellent at picking up very small temperature changes. And that makes a difference, especially if you're using it during the daytime where a lot of objects start to approximate each other in terms of temperature due to sunlight. So yeah. Let's have a look at the Fleur 1 Pro. So the resolution on this camera is significantly less, 160 by 120 resolution. It's got an 8.7 Hertz refresh rate. So you can see there's a bit of a, a lagginess when you're, when you're moving this camera around. Okay. And I think that's just due to the US export rules. I'm not actually sure if this camera can, you know, hypothetically, output 25 hertz anyway without those restrictions, but it does have a 70 millikelvin sensitivity, which is significantly higher than the X3 at 25 or less than 25 millikelvin. So just means that you're going to get a lot more graininess in the image and the, temp the camera is going to find it more difficult to discern small temperature differences. And, and when using these sort of cameras to discern different objects, it's really important to have a low millikelvin value because that allows you to tell basically see more contrast so you know you'll be able to see an outline of a rock branches stuff like that whereas on these low resolution high millikelvin high millikelvin cameras they'll kind of just blend together so in terms of raw thermal resolution and frame rate you know hands down the x3 wins high resolution smoother image better sensitivity you can't go wrong there so in terms of range and zoom the thermaster x3 detects targets up to 1.5 kilometers super impressive for a, a little plug-in unit like this. And basically the, the unit comes with this handle, which also has a battery inside there. So you can actually make it last a lot longer than the Fleur model, uh, but it also protects it. And if you don't want this, don't want this kind of unit, you can actually unscrew it and just take out the camera unit. It's it's about half the size of the flow unit, plus a bit with the lens sticking out, but it's a, actually a tiny unit. I just feel a lot more comfortable having it in there. You've got 15 times digital zoom, just like a pinch zoom kind of uh, feature like that. I don't really use that all, all too much on the X3, given that it's got a 15 millimeter lens on the front. So you do get pretty close to objects anyway, and high resolution. It's also got a manual focus lens. So this allows you to focus onto really, really close objects. So let's see if I can do it to this uh, part there. A little bit, yep. but you can get up to maybe 30 centimeters, less than 30 centimeters close to objects. So if you are working on circuit boards and what have you, this is also a decent option. With the Flow One Pro, this is optimized for short range only. So maybe in the same room, that kind of thing, there's no zoom and no digital zoom. And there's a fixed focused wide lens. So although you do get to see a little more about what's going on in the frame, you're not able to really focus in on things, but you do have this MSX overlay, which as you can see here, helps to identify objects, kind of outlines the objects using a secondary camera. In terms of modes and features, the Thermal Master X3 is for low temperature applications only. So yeah, basically if you're measuring from anything from negative 20 degrees Celsius to 130 degrees Celsius max, it's very sensitive. And if you expose it to high temperatures, you can, you can actually damage the device. So it's gotta be really careful with this thing. And yeah, there's a whole bunch of different features here on the apps. There's tactical reticles, there's fog and rain modes, bird watching, bow hunting. There's even a thermal only. Uh, let's have a look here. There's even all these different color palettes here on the side that you can choose from. It's like a night vision mode here as well. So, and then you can even darken it even further, I believe by pressing oop, this one here. Yeah, that's probably as dark as it goes, but yeah, it's, just sort of optimize so that if you're using this at night, it's not going to blind you and basically just be used for spotting, scouting, that kind of thing. Let's have a look at what other features. So you've got that reset, shutter reset feature there, that uh, little 
crosshairs there basically just tracks objects so you can turn that on and track hottest the hottest uh, objects there on the screen so if you're spotting animals that kind of thing people it's able to kind of you know fly around and give you an indication of of anything that's moving and uh, let's have a look here these are the crosshairs the the reticle which you can customize as well so if you're a hunter that might be useful for you over here you've got a few other settings like i was mentioning before like the bird watching mode which which uh, is fantastic it kind of gets rid of all the trees and so you can see the animals very closely uh, without all without all the interference the rain and fog plane mode here you can uh, take a picture and record video straight within the app view videos as well now in the temperature settings this is uh, there's so many options here so you can do picture in picture so you can go back you can see now there's like a little uh, you know it uses the, the camera on your phone to so that you can identify what's going on or you can when you're recording videos as well include that picture in picture there's also an infrared picture in picture so it's kind of like a as you can see it makes like a little zoomed up version it's difficult to demonstrate here but like a little zoomed up version of whatever you're looking at mm -hmm. in the corner of the screen and yeah, good for spotting infrared image flip. I don't use that. You can flip everything around. There's also, let's see what's, yeah, uh, this is important. So variable correction. So depending on what you're measuring, you do need to set this uh, to, to some kind of uh, custom, custom setting. So every single object is going to have its kind of emissivity value in order to get accurate readings. Same with uh, the ambient temperature and object distance. This can also affect the, the reading accuracy. So it's really good that you're able to actually go into the app and, and set those things to get a better reading. You can also display all these other kind of information and settings, compass, speed, weather, latitude and longitude. I just turn this stuff all off, but it might be helpful for some, for some people. Uh, turn off the watermark as well in there. Okay, so if you look at the Fleur One Pro app here, you can see there's a few little bits and pieces. So if I click that plus button on the bottom, you can select between just normal infrared mode, and that's and that's uh, pretty clean. MSX, you get these kind of outlines using the secondary camera to identify what you're looking at, and just DC mode there. I don't really use that at all. There's no point, seeing as it's a thermal camera. You can also go and change the quality to like a lower quality mode. I wouldn't, um, yeah, I wouldn't suggest uh, suggest doing that. It just kind of makes everything look a bit more grainier. So I just turn it onto the normal mode. There are a few different color palettes, so you can go through and select, uh, as you can see here, these different color palettes. Okay, let's go back. You can also change the temperature ranges in here as well. So if you hit that plus button, temperature range. So if you're measuring from negative 20 to 120 degrees Celsius to zero to 400 degrees Celsius to get better uh, more accurate readings it's the same sort of deal um, with a few of these these fixed focused cameras i think that's pretty much it in there you can also set some uh, different readings and spots here so uh, let's have a look got three spots that you can move around so one two and three if you want to measure like specific areas on the screen plus this stuff that's you know jumping around everywhere the blue dot and the red dot measures uh, basically identifies the highest and lowest temperature point uh, on the screen so yeah that there just does pretty much the same thing highest and lowest point camera shutter reset now if we go into the settings of the camera if we hit the emissivity uh, setting you can change the emissivity to these few presets but unfortunately you can't set anything custom and you can't go in and change the ambient temperature you can't go in and change uh, the distance that kind of thing which also influences the accuracy of the reading so yeah that kind of bugs me in, in terms of getting a more accurate reading i think they should have included that at the bottom here you can also take photos and record so i touched on this a little bit before but the thermal master x3 has this plug and play uh, feature here so basically you can plug the camera directly into your phone take it out of this whole case if you want and it runs off your phone battery but this is the optional armor x kit so this actually comes with with pretty much every single kit the thing that doesn't come with it is the screen you can purchase a screen separately or just use a phone and the cool thing about it is that there is the ability to store a 21700 cell battery in here and i've got one that's rated at 5000 milliamp hours which approximates the you know it's actually a larger capacity battery than most phones actually hold so yeah this allows you to to run it for a lot longer using that battery 
as it charges your phone at the same time. Now, if you're looking at the Fleur 1 Pro, this thing has a built-in battery and actually it ran out of batteries before when I was uh, filming a previous video, so I'm just charging it now. So you need to charge it through this USB-C port uh, here at the bottom. The built-in battery takes about 45 minutes to charge and it lasts about an hour. So once once the battery runs down to zero, you're actually not able to use the, the camera at all. You need to charge it separately. So yeah, uh, it, while it doesn't drain the battery, I think if you are, you know, measuring temperatures for, you know, during the day and you need the battery to last, you really have to keep this thing charged up. So yeah. Okay. So the final important point is of course price and the Thermaster X3 does cost a bit more than the Fleur 1 Pro, but really I don't think it costs that much more considering all the extra you know, features that it has and the the higher quality sensor, higher resolution, smoother image, better sensitivity, that kind of thing. You know, it's, yeah, it's definitely not even double the price of the Fleur 1 Pro. So, you know, unless you really just want something that, that's, uh, you know, for short range distances and you'd need to measure up to 400 degrees Celsius, you know, I think the X3 is the better performer for the price. You just the specs on this thing are incredible and yeah, makes the Fleur, makes the Fleur app and the One Pro lag behind significantly. So yeah, I guess for overall, if you're looking for a long range tactical kind of outdoors use, general use thermal camera, if you're not measuring high temperature objects, the Thermomaster X3 is the powerhouse and the, the manual focus, you know, ring as well allows you to look at objects from very close up to far away, making it much more versatile, in my opinion. But if you need those MSX, MSX sort of overlays and you just want a camera that's for short range, maybe just measuring within the same room of a house, mm -hmm. you know, for inspections and stuff like that, the Flow One Pro still does a good job. So yeah, what do you guys think? Let me know which one fits your needs in the comments below. If you have mm -hmm. questions, also comment and I'll get back to you. And if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, click the like button, share it with someone who might be interested. It helps me to get the channel out to more people. And if you want to see more tech reviews and thermal camera reviews, make sure you subscribe. Okay, so on the left, I've got the Fleur 1 Pro, and on the right, I've got the Thermal Master X3. And uh, what I'm going to do is just like focus the X3 with the focusing dial. And you can see how close it gets in. Like that's the same USB plug that you can see on the Fleur display to the left. In front of it, there's like a flashlight that I have on the table, a secret flashlight. <laughs> it's going to be released next month. Okay. But you can see just how close you can get up to things and the, okay. So now I've got this uh, circuit board plugged in. I'm getting really close to it here on the table. I've got this circuit board on this table and i'm just going to focus the x3 in to get a very close-up image okay see how close i can get to it without it um yeah that's pretty much about it that's as close as as i can get and still i'm a pretty decent resolution on that circuit board i'll get closer with the thermaster uh, not the th uh, this is the Fleur 1 Pro just getting up really close and you can see some details as well but um, in terms of absolute you know those smaller components it's very difficult to to visualize it still does okay but um, let's have a look at the X3 once more a lot clearer in identifying those smaller components and just turn this off let's have a little look around and again i'm just going to have to refocus this uh, this dial when you're outside looking long range at things you won't have to do this but i really like this option and here like if you look at on the ground these like wires and and what have you you can get so close and even see on the power board itself, like which part of the power board is hot. And that's due to the lower millikelvin rating. You know, look at that, even inside that power brick, there's a bit of 
some areas that are slightly hotter than the rest of the power brick. The resolution is just incredible. And as you can see, it's quite smooth as well. Let's go around. So, uh, a bit of a walk. Okay, and this is my fridge. So kind of like a closer up range task. I think the Fleur does okay with this. Okay, and as you can see, there's like a much wider field of view compared to the Thermomaster X3. But uh, quality detail is still miles ahead in the X3. Again, you're able to just refocus onto that door like that. And there's, you can see just the nuance there with the detail. You can't really see what with that door at all. Okay. Let's get closer. You know, the X3 is still good for close-up inspections. This is the switchboard. Let's open that up. Let's have a quick look. And I'll focus that better. Oops. All right, so this is my switchboard. If you compare them both, it's like night and day, really. I can get quite close to it. You can see the detail on that switch compared to the Fleur one. There. Okay, so this is where the Thermomaster X3 really excels. And you can see I'm just sort of focusing a little bit down below where you can see people walking around on that tennis court down on the street as well huge difference because everything's just kind of blurry on the floor maybe I could turn on the MSX it's the MSX uh, get out of that it makes it look a little bit better like it discerns the objects but still is not able to kind of pick up like smaller targets uh, let's switch it just back to the infrared if you had to just go by the infrared it's really difficult to make out what's going on whereas with the x3 i mean this is just insane it's a few blocks away like those cars moving <laughs> right in the distance there can even see like the cars themselves and what part you know, the front of the car is kind of hotter 